cut my life into pieces. This is the Soundtown Podcast. I'm your tour guide, Russ. Eric. And welcome to the Soundtown Podcast. Sorry <laughs> for being so abrasive in our opening. <laughs> We're just so excited for this episode. <laughs> <laughs> Your Papa Roach just sneaks out sometimes. It just sneaks out. Do you think we're going to get sued that I used it without their consent? Probably, but you know, maybe that'll that'll get us more clicks. So yeah, yeah. It's not nope. a bad thing. Bad press is good I press. wish everybody would sue us. Yeah. Can someone please sue us? Can someone, someone please follow us? Someone please subscribe to us? Someone please listen to us? And then someone please sue us. Please. <laughs> Uh, enough jokes, Eric. Let's just dive right into this one. Uh, this episode was with an old college buddy of mine, Colin Webb, an extremely talented videographer, photographer, uh, who goes to concerts and festivals and uh, takes amazing video and, and I guess mainly photos as of late of the people performing. A lot of people in the EDM hip hop world seem like but he's super talented. Uh, he talked to us about his journey into freelancing and what his goals are. And I, I thought it was really informative, uh, much like some of our prior episodes for people who kind of want to get into that space. Uh, what do you think? Should we just dive right into it, Eric? Yeah, I think so. Cool. Thank dive you. Right in. Let's just dive right in. Thank you to Colin. And uh, without further ado, here here's the, our talk with Colin Webb of Colin Webb Media. Thank you for taking the time to, to hop on. Yeah, I appreciate you uh, reaching out. It's good to catch up with you. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. You know, I think I think everyone's got their, their, their own opinions on social media, but I think the coolest thing about it is uh, when you can't keep in close contact with old friends, you get to see all the cool stuff that they're doing. And you've been, yeah, doing yeah, some, yeah. You've been up to some pretty, pretty cool stuff. I'm excited to uh, talk about if you're open to it. Yeah, of course. I appreciate it. I always like... Uh... I'm always down to chat about everything, work, and, you know, give people advice. And I'm excited to hear what you're up to as well. Thanks, man. Yeah. Well, I mean, just hanging out now. <laughs> someone, someone, well, I, I, apologies. Um, this, uh, Colin, this is my co-host, Eric. What's up, Eric? <laughs> Eric, and I, Eric and I went to high school together, and uh, we, we make music together. Oh, sweet. And we're, we're both still living our respective hometowns kind of eric just moved out um we also run a podcast together That's yeah kind of a big thing too yeah yeah well a buddy of ours uh reached out and said i'll pay for the rss feed if you guys do a podcast for our network i was like all right sure yeah, might as well yeah, yeah exactly. during the pandemic we f- we fell into the podcast you know yes. everyone started doing one but it's just <laughs> an excuse for us to catch up with old friends and yeah uh learn about what makes them tick and how they do all the cool stuff and everything. But um, so Colin and I met in college and I'm tr- I don't, I can't recall a specific instance where I would have met you, Colin. Do you? No, probably not. Just around Hawk TV. I just, think. Yeah. Just around the, the communication building. Did you study abroad? I did. Yeah, I did. Okay. So that was my senior year. I did it in the fall and then I was back for one more semester and then graduated. Oh, but so then I would have known you since bef- from before you. Yeah yeah oh okay i was there for three years i did my sophomore through senior year there gotcha so it was probably junior year because i didn't really do too much hawk tv sophomore year and then junior and senior year is when i started doing it gotcha what what did you always know you wanted to get into that kind of multimedia kind of space i was i was thinking about this the other day i have i remember like a specific instance when i was in high school and everyone was like picking colleges and there was a kid next to me i had no idea what i wanted to do at this point and the kid sitting next to me was like, I'm going to go to whatever this college. And he's like, I want to be a TV cameraman. And I remember thinking like, that sounds kind of cool. Like maybe I'll look into that. And then like looking back throughout my childhood, I always had like the, the VHS camcorder, like at home, just running around with all that stuff. So it was kind of a good fit. And then just kind of like, that was the idea going in was go for production and just kind of see where it took me. Awesome. I think I actually kind of had a, same, a similar vibe. Like, 
I was always into watching TV and movies. And it, like you said, I, I, what I had was like a flip camera and making yeah. my brothers like act out things. I tell them on the spot. Yeah. And then, you know, fast forward. Oh, I had a passion for this a long time ago. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Looking back I, I same thing. I never really realized how much I did like doing that stuff as a kid and I still get to do it. So that's a lot of fun. Yeah. So then, um, when you, when you were in school, did you find that you learned a lot or did the connections you make kind of outweigh what you were well, able to do? I did. Cause I, I like had a pretty good idea. It's, I wanted to work in production and I still wasn't sold on the idea. So I went to community college my freshman year and I did a class, a TV class there. I did like TV one just to see how it was. And I liked being in the studio. I liked kind of doing all the different jobs. So then that kind of kept the, or kept the ball rolling and then went to Monmouth, decided I wanted to major in that and then got involved doing all that kind of stuff. But I definitely did like being in the studio and, you know, all the equipment. And I feel like most photographers and a lot of people that work in our industry are nerds. And like, I can definitely say, you know, like I like geeking out over gear and stuff like that. So it's, it's fun to me to like go and check out gear and be able to get to use all this like super expensive equipment and just play around and have fun. Absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, at Monmouth, I, I can only speak to experiences at Monmouth, but they had such an awesome facility, a lot of really cool. Uh, toys yeah, for exactly. Us to play around exactly. With. Um, I, I'm curious about your route from community college to a bigger university. If you had the option, would you do that ag again? Yeah, absolutely. I highly, I, did, I think um, I saved a ton of money. So that freshman year, I pretty much did all gen ed classes and then I took like a TV class just to see how I liked it. And looking back, those were the hardest classes I ever took in college was that first year at community. Because once I got to Monmouth, um, you know, most of the hard ones were out of the way. I didn't have to take science. I didn't have to take math. Like there was a couple ones I still had to had to knock out. But I did all the hard classes that first year. And then the rest was mostly comm classes. Yeah. And then, you know, a couple of the other gen eds that I couldn't squeeze in that first year. So gotcha. it was definitely I highly recommend it. I saved a lot of money. Uh, I was able to do the hard ones first and then. Once I got to Monmouth, it was kind of just smooth sailing from there. Awesome. And so can you kind of talk about what you're doing now specifically? I'd, I'd hate to try and sum it up my, myself when the man yeah. himself could, could so talk to it. I kind of have like, I don't even know where to start because I do have two jobs right now. So my day job, my nine to five, I work as an assistant editor for Yahoo Finance. Nice. So before COVID, I was living in New York. We have an office in Manhattan. I was you know, living in New York, taking the subway to work every day. And then um, since COVID, we've moved home. So I'm actually back home in New Jersey now. I'm getting ready to move out again and go back because we're starting to head back to the office. Um, so that takes up majority of my time is working for them as an assistant editor. And then I kind of told myself, I didn't really want to do the whole work in an office nine to five thing. Mm hmm because I like to be, I really like being on set and out on field shoots and stuff like that. But I needed a steady job. I was kind of freelancing. Yeah. So I told myself when I took the job, I'll do this boring job to pay my bills. And then I'll try and push my photography career on the side as my creative outlet. So, you know, I, I can still be happy working that nine to five job because I still get to go on the weekends and shoot and do other things. Absolutely. So to sum it up, I do the, the uh, I'm an AE for Yahoo Finance. And then on the side, I have a freelance photography videography business that I've been pushing for the last couple of years. It's awesome. And the work that you do is incredible. I want to talk to that, talk about that. But I, I didn't realize about your, your Yahoo gig. That sounds, that sounds pretty cool. Yeah, it's super stable. Everyone there is really cool. They treat us super well. I have like a really good boss. I actually do. I ended up loving the job a lot. That's great. Um, do you enjoy being in the city? I do. Yeah. I've this last year, I hated working from home this last year. And like, really? it's kind of crazy because now I'm starting to like it. <laughs> I'm like finally comfortable and, and settled in and now it's time to go back, which is okay. You know, but yeah. uh, it's still all up in the air. So I'm hoping we're going to do some kind of like hybrid, you know, maybe two days in three days home or something like that, but it's still all up in the air. Gotcha. So when we were in school, Colin, uh, sometimes some professors or even just the, our department would bring in alumni and they'd get to speak to students. I always right. like that because it's real world experience. Those guys who have really awesome jobs used to sit in this desk. And some of them would 
try to help you decide, you know, freelance or find more steady work. Yep. And when I heard people talk about freelance, it scared the heck out of me. And I knew I always wanted to have something steady. And, you know, fast forward to now, I'm trying out some freelance gigs and I still don't like it. Or did you <laughs> always know from the get-go you wanted to work freelance? Or- no. So I would, I pretty much wanted any job I could take and that's all I could get when I, gotcha. right after I graduated, all I could get was freelance PA stuff because I didn't have much experience. You know, a lot of companies don't really want to hire people fresh out of college. And I will say, you know, I definitely learned a lot in college and I'm glad I went and had that experience, but like production wise and ability wise, I've learned so much more after graduation just by working and getting that actual experience, which is what people care about more than your education is, you know, what you know how to do and if you're good at it or not. Totally. But I agree. Yeah, it's, it's kind of been crazy. The freelance thing was super stressful. I was like so happy when I finally was able to get something steady and full time because yeah. I was, you know, I was constantly looking for the next job. You know, you, I would work for two weeks straight because I didn't want to say no to certain gigs. And, you know, I was definitely burnt out and I was happy. The timing of this permanent job came around like right when I needed it. Um, but I, I like both aspects. There's a give and take to both, you know? Yeah, if, for if sure. If you want to have a crazy, hectic life, go. you can do some cra- like really good opportunities. I know people that like travel to Fiji to shoot and all kinds of crazy stuff. So if you want to, if you're up for it, but I definitely like the more, I like the structure of, of being able to have my normal job. And then I'm lucky because they're super flexible. So if I do have to take days off to go shoot a festival or, you know, do a couple day run shooting shows, as long as I give them advance notice, I can take off and I'm able, it hasn't hinged my career at all yet. That's great to hear. And I'm, I'm so stoked to hear that you do have that, that steadier position and, uh, you know, you like where you work and it's, it's works for your, your free time stuff. So that's, that's really awesome to hear. Yeah. I just, I really wanted to shoot, especially when I was PAing my whole, even now, my big goal is I like being around cameras. I like shooting, you know, my whole goal was, to be a shooter, I was doing a lot of reality TV PA stuff. So I wanted nice. to be a cam op on a reality show. But at the end of the day, I didn't have the experience for it. Um, a lot, you need a lot of, a lot of years, a lot of hands on yeah. money to be hired as a cam op because you have to be good. And it's hard to get your hands on some of those cameras when each one costs $500,000. Know? Yeah. yeah. So super expensive. I just wanted to shoot and me starting my photography business was my way of being able to shoot. You know, yeah, no, I think that's an amazing initiative. Could you speak to some of the reality shows you worked on, or you kind of keep? That uh, yeah, I did a couple of crazy ones. No, it was um, it was all PA work for the most part. I had one of them was an office job, but I did, um, I did two days with Big Brother. They did like a package in New York, so nice. I just lived, it was like a field crew they sent out. I did like a week and a half for a show, uh, for Discovery Channel. It was down in Wildwood, New Jersey. It was like um. It was one of the car building shows where they like they build a special race car and then they come out for an event. So they flew a, they flew a crew in from LA for like a week and a half. It was called uh, I think it was called Shifting Gears. I never ended up seeing it. So I did that one, and then I did um, I did like a I don't even remember what it was, but it was an Asian. It was like from it was like a Thai reality show that was in uh, New York for a couple of days. They didn't even speak any English, but they needed a PA. And then I did um, the show on History Channel. It was called Night Fight. That was like a two-month gig. That one was pretty good. And it was pretty much MMA, but these guys dress up in knights uh, suits of armor, like medieval knights. <laughs> and they just kick the shit out of each other with axes and swords. It was, that one was pretty crazy. <laughs> it's hilarious. And he, like, uh, you know, when, when I think of reality TV, I think of like a lot of confrontation and like a lot of drama. Uh, anything crazy you had to deal with behind the scenes or not really? Uh, not so much. I'm trying to think if anything good happened. I did another one for, we were in Atlantic City. It was for Showtime. It was some documentary. I don't, I don't think we really have anything too crazy. The best would be was from the night show. Just some of the, it was like a, a, a competition show. They, they like fought for money and we had a couple of people go to the hospital <laughs> ambulance was there a few times because these guys they were not joking they had like full-on metal swords and axes and would just kick the shit out of each other that's crazy i think it only ran for like one or two seasons and i don't even know if it's a show anymore but that's awesome that you you have that experience i'm sure you did 
learn a lot. I mean, running around being a PA. I mean, what, what, what have, you, it, what, have you done anything like that? Not, not to that scale for like a real television show, but you right. know, sm- maybe smaller kind of corporate, corporate things here and there. And you know, it's you crazy. Can- some of the money, like the, just the budget that they spend on some of these shows. Oh, dude, it's I insane. remember. So for the night fight one, I was working more in the production office. I wasn't, I think I was like a office PA or something like that. So I was in the office for most of it. And I was helping the production manager with some of the budget stuff for a week or two. So I could see some of the numbers of what they were spending. And I remember like just trying to do a rough guess of how much they were spending. This was before payroll. This is just, you know, electricity, rent, how much food they were buying, all the car rentals, like the hotel rentals, because they flew the whole crew out. But I remember losing track at like $10 million or something like that. And that was before uh, they had to start paying the crew out. And this was like some some no-name show that you've never heard of. Yeah. Well, (laughs) me and my friends used to talk about... In my later years in, in, in school, I don't know if you were around or not, but a, a friend of mine tried to start his own LLC and he wanted to make videos for local businesses and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, no one wanted to hire him because he was just some college kid. Right. But he would he he knew what to do. And, you know, you knew that some of our friends back at school, we I think we were talented enough to, you know, make a, a YouTube video for pliables. Right. Right. Um, and so he ended up graduating and he had an internship with Pfizer and he heard that Pfizer was hel- helping one of the medical devices make a commercial. The budget was $300,000 for like a 20, 30 second ad. Yep. And they were going to, they wanted um, uh, somebody surfing. That's what the shot that they wanted. So they needed to find a surfer and they needed to find a large body of water, but they needed to control the waves. So they built from scratch a wave pool for the <laughs> surfer. And he's like, you guys can just like get the stock footage for $20. Yeah, that's crazy. That's yeah, insane. it's it, it's it, yeah, the money is that's really the difference when you get to the big budget stuff is just the money. Yeah. Um, and it, it's kind of cool because. I'm trying to think of how many people were on that show. I even like the Discovery Channel one. There's, it was like a 20, 30, maybe even 40 person crew they send out. So you don't even get to meet it, know everyone's Everybody, name. Everybody, yeah. You're just the PA that's just running around like it, with your head cut off the whole time. Yeah, because time and, is money. You got to get it all done quick. Exactly. And they were just really long days. That was the other thing I yeah. did. About being. I, was, I was easily doing like 14 hour days and I was yeah. still living at home. So then I would have to drive back to New Jersey another hour and a half after busting my ass all day. Yeah. So I definitely, and they were giving me like maybe 200 bucks for like the whole day, you know, which then was fine because I had no money. Yeah. But it wears off really quick, you know, it's like, I can't do definitely. this much longer. And the other thing too was I kept meeting these people and they were like the 30 year old PA guy. And I'm like, I never want to be that guy. Like that yeah. might be okay for some people, you know, but I remember seeing that. I was like, I kind of need to, I need to get out of this once I find something better, because I don't want to get stuck in this. For sure. Well, so, I mean, for we still, I want to get to your your freelance stuff and that might be the end all be all for you. But so when I, when I PA, I know that my goal is to eventually become a a producer. I want to be in the producer role. Is your goal still to be that camera op or do you want to just do your freelance stuff full time? I mean, I I want to do my freelance stuff full time, but I just want to level up my freelance stuff so I can start affording better cameras and and getting bigger budget gigs, you know, for sure, because the music industry is very cheap. There's definitely some money to be made, but even like I know some of the top guys that do work as photographers in the music industry and they're doing pretty well. But from what I could tell, most of these people are not making the money that you think they would be at that level. Yeah. compared to the people who are doing the same thing at a production level for TV shows. Yes. You know what I mean, so like a good DP will make like 1500 bucks a day. And some of these photo guys are making 1500 a week, which is still good. Yeah. But the money is not there like it is with big budget production. So if, if, you know, I'm not really in it for the money at this stage, it's still something fun that I like to do. It's definitely work, but I'm not trying to, you know, that's not a huge factor to me, but it definitely, it, it caps out. So we'll see where, where it goes. It, well, and you, it looks like you're doing really cool gigs, but also the, the, the work that you put out there is, is really well done. 
I appreciate I, that. Oh, for sure, dude. Um, I'm my own big critic. So, you know, I post something and then the next day I look back at it. I'm like, why did I even post this? this <laughs> no, I think it's, I think it's so cool. And, you know, especially now, you know, people are like, quote unquote, returning to normalcy since the pandemic and the, yeah. the stuff that you post looks so much fun. Uh, definitely got the summer vibes going. Yeah. I'm so curious, like, how did you start building that up? Cause I, I'm sure you have an opinion on the level that your freelancing gigs are at, but like to me, again, Eric and I are in a band. We don't like play festivals. We don't play crowds like that. Right, Those seem like right. so, like pretty pretty cool gigs to be to be yeah. working on. How did you get to that that? So tier? it's it's kind of a crazy story. It's the same thing with production goes, and I'm sure it's the same thing as being in a band. It's really about all about who you know and the connections you can make and yeah. doing a good job when you do get a big opportunity because people notice that you know, but. I was just going to a lot of shows. It's so for everyone that doesn't know, I pretty much shoot, I do photos and videos strictly for like EDM DJ shows. Um, I've done like hip hop maybe once or twice. I would like to branch out, but all my connections are like in that world. And that's kind of where I established myself. So I'm just going to keep rolling with that at this yeah, point. Until something else. But um, that was the kind of music I was into in college. And I was just going to a lot of shows then and, I didn't even own a camera until I was 23. Um, so I definitely was like a late start to this whole thing. But I was going to shows and then I went one weekend as a fan with some friends. We went down to Virginia to go to like a weekend. It was like a mini festival in Virginia. And I ended up staying in a hotel room with this guy who was like a mutual friend of one of my friends. And he happened to be like a promoter in, in Philly and they throw shows in Philly where they book DJs and all that kind of stuff. So I was able to meet him that weekend. And I think, I don't think I had my own camera, but I think at that point I was borrowing a camera from my internship. And nice. I, I said to him, I was like, Hey man, like, you know, can I come to your, some of your shows and start taking photos? And they kind of started letting me in the back door. I didn't get paid at first for maybe, maybe like the first six months. I don't even think I asked them for any money because I wasn't yeah. even comfortable. I didn't know what I was doing. You know, I yeah. didn't feel comfortable charging people at that point. So I remember I had like the borrowed camera for a couple months and then I ended up investing in buying my own. And then I just kept working with them and, you know, meeting different artists that were coming into Philly and, and meeting different managers and working with different teams, just kind of making my little network based out of there. And then once I moved to New York, I already had a pretty good connect, uh, a pretty good network and I was able to start uh, moving all my contacts from Philly into New York and I was actually getting really I was really busy before COVID hit that last summer um, I felt like still I mean there's nothing I can do about it but I felt like I was about to peak right before COVID hit yeah <laughs> and then it was just like no that's not happening you know no nothing's going on so that was a little disappointing because that was going to be a really big summer for me I had a lot of big festivals lined up and wow a lot of good gigs and everything ended getting shut down but we're back now and things are things are coming back to normal so i was trying to just keep the ball rolling stay motivated awesome yeah that was it so i mean that is the story you just told i wasn't expecting that route uh, we had i don't know if you remember ali nugent from school yeah i actually yeah. listened to her episode when i was checking out oh your cool yeah and well the way that she approaches her concert photography is she just gets a press pass and, and walks in obviously uh she's probably not well, I think what she said was she gets paid because she then sells it to uh, publications to use. Right. But, but you're working for the so artist specifically. There's pretty much three different ways to get into a concert with your camera. There's doing the press pass way mm -hmm. like she does. And that's you get signed on by a publication, depending on how big it is. For the most part, I don't I've never done it because I got lucky. I got in with the promoters right away. But for the most part, I don't think the publications pay because most of them are small publications. Yeah. Anyway. Obviously, the bigger ones do. Um, so you can get in with the press pass, which usually has limited access. Sometimes, depending on the show, they'll give you AA and you can go wherever you'd like. Um, but if you can't go through a, um, through a publication, then you can book directly with the artist or you can work for the event slash promoter itself. So like say, you know, at Lollapalooza, like Lollapalooza, the festival hires a video team and a photo team uh, to shoot the entire weekend. Yeah. Com compared to someone else that's showing up with the artist, you show up with them, they play for an hour, you shoot their hour set, and then you fly out and leave with them to wherever they're going next. Gotcha. Or 
you get the press pass, you go and hang out for the weekend and you shoot from the pit. So there's definitely, there's different ways to do it. And every job that I do is different. So sometimes I'll work for the event. Sometimes I'll work for the artist and I'll pretty much, you know, as long as it's a good gig, whoever will hire me, I'll, I'll go. So would you ever go on tour with somebody? That, do you think? That's my next goal. So I, I was almost going to quit Yahoo. I didn't say that, but I was getting ready to quit before COVID. It was a thought. I wasn't actually going to do it, but it was a thought of I might have to quit soon. Gotcha. If it keeps up. Yeah. And then it didn't keep up because of COVID. Mm -hmm. So now I'm back where I'm at. But my that is my end goal is to tour. That's um, awesome. That's kind of how I want to take things to the to the next step. I'm still like, I like my job and everything, and I would hope that I could work something out with them where I could leave and then come back after the tour is over. Um, cause they've been super flexible. So that would be like my goal is my next step is I want to level up and start touring. Cool. So, and so when you say you want to branch out to other genres, anything in, in specific in mind, are you just happy to do anything? I just like the best ones are, I like doing festivals cause they're huge. The production is yeah. really big. Everything is taken up to the next level. You know, they book the biggest artists. There's the most people there. So pretty much all of my club and like normal show works to me is I do the smaller ones. I still like shooting, you know, all these venues and stuff. Don't get me wrong, but I do all of that in order to prepare for festival season. So that way I have the portfolio and I have the network to back it up once that starts happening, you know? Yeah. So even the summer coming up, the summer's just getting started. Um, but because of COVID, a lot of festivals got pushed back to like September, October. Yeah. The fall. So like, July is not very busy for me, but once August hits around, hopefully uh, there's a lot of things up in the air, but I, I should be busy from August to September into October and then just see where things go from there. Awesome. I'm glad we were able to chat with you before you got too busy. I know, right? <laughs> uh, have you always had an interest in photo editing or was that kind of a talent you, you picked no, up so later on? Because you're I really wanted... good at it, by the way. I was very surprised to see how... I appreciate that. I wanted to do, um, so when I bought my camera, I bought uh, a video, like mainly a video camera. I have a Sony a7S II. I'm sure you're familiar, Yeah. but on that line, that's like the video camera. You know, you, I take, I still take decent photos with it, but it's more of a video camera. And that's what I wanted to do when I first started was I want to make like videos for artists and stuff like that. And I started to realize pretty quickly that most people don't want to pay you just to do video. You can still do it and there's a lot of jobs that will but most of them want half and half so then i just started teaching myself photography on the fly gotcha. and just started doing half and half and that's because they, they want to like post stuff to instagram and stuff right yeah so they like my biggest um trying to think of how to phrase it like my biggest goal when i go out and shoot for an artist is it's all about marketing and selling more tickets yeah so no matter how bad the show is say no one showed up or whatever it's my job to make it look as full as possible and as fun as possible. So that way, when they post it on Instagram, people say that and say, hey, I want to go to this guy's show because it looks so good. I got so there's definitely like a whole marketing aspect from it that I wasn't really, I didn't think about beforehand, you know, like my job yeah. is to make them look good, even if they don't look good. Um, Absolutely. So that's like a huge part of it. Would you ever, do you always want to stick with, what you're doing with uh you know live concert photography would you want to get into like press photos for for somebody or yeah or i would do like i would do a lot of things my biggest goal is i really like to travel and i want someone to pay me to travel gotcha so to me my easiest route to get to doing that is to touring with an artist at this point in my career gotcha that's that's my closest way you know i would love to um i have a couple friends that like you know they're instagram influencers whatever you want to call them, but they get brand deals to travel and, you know, they do travel content. I would be all about that, but that's not really the world I built for myself. Sure. You know? So I, I just like to create and I'm having fun doing this. It seems like it's going pretty well. So I'm just going to kind of keep doing that. And if, you know, an opportunity comes in, I wouldn't say no. That's awesome, dude. It sounds like you got like a really strong idea of where you want to go and how you think you can get there. And uh, I'm just so excited for you to see, to see what happens next. Me too. The hardest part has been leveling up for me because right now I feel like I'm more of like a regional, like a local hire Yeah. compared to getting flown out. And that's just that next step I have to take is, yeah. you know, right now 
when an artist is coming to New York and they don't have the money to fly someone out and pay for a hotel, they, that's when they come to me because I'm already there. Gotcha. You know what I mean? So I'm still able to work for these artists, but I'm not able to travel with them yet. So I'm gotcha. trying to take that, that next step up of leaving New York, leaving Philly and starting to become a more traveled photographer where they'll fly me out to wherever they are compared to only seeing me when they're in town. You know? Gotcha. Yeah. So I, I, I'm not too familiar with like the culture of, of EDM music or, or how those artists might want to promote their music. But I, I know like from a band's perspective, uh, you know, music videos aren't as big budget as they used to be. Uh, I've seen some folks just compile a bunch of uh, live tour footage and call that a music video. Right. Would you work on anything like that, do you think? Or does it not fit the genre? No, I mean, I've done a lot of promo stuff. So some of the editor or not the editor, some of the um, the promoters I work for in Philly, a lot of times before the show, they'll have an artist send them a press pack with all their, their photos and they'll usually have video clips in there. So they'll pass that along to me and I'll cut up all the footage they gave the promoters and make like a little promo video out of it. Nice. So it's that it's the same kind of thing. You know, it's it's a little bit different. It's not necessarily a music video, but that kind of ties back into selling tickets and yeah. getting people there you know that's really the main goal of it all awesome man no like i said i you sound you sound confident you sound cool, calm, collected <laughs> and that that's awesome to hear the whole thing's such a business which i kind of knew going in but i didn't really knew know how it worked but the more i got into it i really realized how much of like a well-run business the whole music industry as a whole is and i do hate to say it but like you know the main, the main thing is the fans and they want people to come and have fun and have a good time. But at the end of the day, they need to sell as many tickets as possible. That's like super important. They need to get people yeah. there. So that's where people like me come in. Because like, you know, in the world that we live in with like streaming and everything, not a lot of people are making money off of their albums anymore. So it's all the, the tours and concerts. Yeah, well, some of these events even... I know like some events don't make money unless they sell out, you know, it, yeah. it's like very thin margins or it's like, you know, say it's a, say it's a 10,000 ticket event, you know, maybe they'll only start making profit on the last like 500 tickets, you know, because they have to spend so much on production and flights and, you know, catering and all kinds of crazy stuff. Um, but yeah, there's all these like really weird things that I, I try to ask as many questions as possible, especially with my promoter friends. I'm just curious on how things work. Yeah. Because I feel like the more I know about how like the people that are paying me think, then the more I can make myself appeal to them. Yeah, cater to them. Exactly. exactly. So I try to learn as much as I can about how things are working on the back end and, you know, agents and managers. I had no idea how any of that stuff works. Yeah, no, it's 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 a the wild wild west out there for sure it's crazy and i really realized too especially with a lot of artists the big thing i'm sure you know this for a band as well but like the music is super important but the biggest thing is having a good team behind you if you don't have mm -hmm. a good agent or a good manager to help take your band to that next level you're probably not going to get there you know yeah. some people can get lucky on uh you have to work hard no matter what that's just kind of a given and you have to have good music that's a given too but in order to go up to that next level, because there's a lot of good musicians out there. I'm sure you know that. Yeah. And the thing that takes them to the next level is having a good team behind them and someone, someone to book gigs and, you know, help help build the band. It's not yeah. just the band. There's a lot of people behind the scenes pushing them. Definitely. And, you know, just someone to help guide you through the uh, constantly changing or evolving industry. Like yep. the music industry was not the same just five years ago. Yep. Um, you know, like TikTok, it's alone has changed the game in, in ways that I'm not even able to comprehend. <laughs> I know I, I'm still, I should have done it. I'm just like kind of morally against TikTok. I don't know why. I just like, I don't know. It's not my thing. Well, you know what? I was too. And I just figured at, at some point, I'm like, as much as I hate the idea of it, I work in media. If someone ever asked me to make me a TikTok video, I should know how to do it. And I realized like, true. it's not just like, people dancing and doing really lame stuff there's some pretty awesome stuff out there is no, i hate right. to say i've been converted but so it's the way cool. the way i see it is all of the good stuff gets reposted to instagram anyway so i'll still gotcha see it. you'll still see it that's <laughs> fair that, that weeds out all the bad stuff you know so all i don't right. get to see the top tier tiktoks because they're just getting reposted on instagram fair enough that's kind of where i'm at 
But it's funny you say that because I saw a big artist yesterday post a TikTok and I thought to myself, like, I don't know if I would know if someone asked me to do this for them. I have no idea how to even make a TikTok. Here's what's really crazy about it, Colin. You know, Instagram, the only people who are going to see what you post are your followers. Maybe it may be just maybe right. they find you and explore. Right. With TikTok, you do have followers, but they just send it to everybody's timeline. Right. Exactly. So you don't know who's going to see it, that's, but you're going, cool guaranteed part. to get views. Yeah, it's insane. It's insane. But um, wait, are you able to uh, name drop what kind of festivals or artists you've worked with in the past? Or I don't want to make you uncomfortable. Yeah, I mean, I'm just trying to think of like the best ones. I was able... One of the bigger ones, it was just right before COVID. Uh, I did Hijinx Festival in uh, Philadelphia. That was like a two-day indoor. I think that was like a 24,000 person sold out event, which was huge. That was definitely yeah. the biggest thing I'd ever done. So I was riding the high from that. And then COVID hit, so that kind of brought me back down. But I'm trying to think of what else I did. Um, Camp Bisco is a pretty big festival out here in Scranton, Pennsylvania, as far as this whole EDM world goes. I was able to do... Um, I, I got hired by the festival. So I did their media team for the whole weekend, which was a pretty crazy experience. Um, I just got back, I guess, two or three weeks ago from Forbidding Kingdom Festival in Orlando. Um, that was definitely, that was my biggest booking directly with the artist. So I was actually really proud of that one. Nice. Um, so that was like a really good way to, to come back. And that was the first big event I did since COVID. So it was definitely a, a good way to start. Um, I'm trying to think I did ice cube and TI in Detroit, which was like Whoa. super random. That was like one of the only hip hop gigs I got. Um, that one was really good. It was like for high times magazine. So it was like a weed festival and they, they hired them to come in and perform. So I did the, I was on the media team for that event. Um, That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, that one was really fun. <laughs> I'm trying to think of who else. I don't know. It's just been, it, the whole thing has been so crazy. I just remember like wanting to be where I'm at so badly, you know, for so many, for so long. And then everyone says this, but like now I'm here, I'm still just looking up to seeing. Like, yeah. But like, that's the perfect attitude to have. It, I, I can't, I just want to get better and better and better. Cause I see everyone around me and there are so many talented people that do what I do yeah. and they're so much better than me. In my opinion, I just want to get to that level, you know? Yeah. I got, I totally get where you're coming from, but you know, everything that you're saying has been totally like correct and your outlook on it. Yeah. yeah. Just continuing to want to grow. It's been such like a crazy, I think like when I started, if you told me I was going to do it, I probably would believe you because I was so driven. Like I knew this yeah. is what I wanted to do. But just the way everything's worked out, it's still, it's just crazy. Like my biggest issue that I've had or my biggest struggle was dealing with the fact of turning my fun release time, which is going to shows into work. Yeah. Because, you know, they say you, if you do what you love, you don't work a day in your life. But to me, that's not true because yes, I love what I do, but it's also work, you know? Yeah. So when you go to shows, most people you're there to let loose and have fun and enjoy yourself. You know, you want to have some drinks. You want to see your friends. You want to see your favorite band. You're there to like get away from your responsibilities. But when I'm there, I have responsibilities. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I get where you're coming from. Completely. It's like a completely different mindset. I'm like half the time I have to wear earplugs because I would be deaf if I didn't. Yeah. But half the time I, I'm not even like really listening to what's playing. Like I can hear it, but I'm not paying attention because I'm focused on, I have a list in my head of all the shots I need to get. Yeah. And I'm focused on just going down that list and just getting each one of those. And sometimes the artist only plays an hour. So I have an hour to get every shot I need. So I'm running around like an, a maniac for an yeah. hour during the set. You know, I'm not really watching the show, if that makes sense. No, I totally get it. Um, so, it's, it's not really the same thing, but I remember uh, having the opportunity to, to film uh, some of the division one sports at school. And so when you're a camera person, you know, the, say there's a football game going on at the end of the game, you're like, okay, who won? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's the exact same thing. Cause you get tunnel vision and you're focused yeah. on what you're doing, not yeah. the overall event. Yeah. But yeah, that was weird. So, you know, especially when I was in New York, I was doing a lot of like most Friday, Saturday nights, I had gigs, which was good. I was busy, you know? Yeah. But when I would get a Friday night off, 
you know, I would talk like, what are you guys doing tonight? Talking to some of my friends like, oh, we're going to a club or to a show. It's like, that's the and last that's the thing last I want to do on my day yeah. off. <laughs> you know, I, like, I don't yeah. want to go to a fucking club. Like, hell no. I want to stay at home or yeah. go out to eat or whatever. I don't want to go to another show. I totally get that, dude. That's funny. So that was really weird. That was really, it's still weird to me sometimes. But COVID was a good reset, you know? So now I have, I have my drive back and I'm ready just to keep going. So we'll see. Awesome, man. It's, it's really heartwarming to hear how good it, it's going for you. And I'm, I'm, I'm happy to see it. You, you mentioned working in, in, in music and everything like that. Have you ever tried your hand at, at making music or are you strictly just, you just want to listen? Yeah, I just want to listen. I never had any kind of interest in that. I feel like, I don't know, I might be good at it because I feel like editing videos might not be so different than, um, at least for the electronic stuff than producing. Well, so, and I, I don't know, I don't know what comes first. I think because I'm a musician and I kind of understand rhythm and, and how it all works, that definitely helps my editing, but I don't know if it works the other way around. I didn't right. think about that until you just said it. I just feel like the whole creative process as a whole is so crazy and I'm sure you go through it all the time, but there's just so many ups and downs. So I feel like knowing that I might be able to produce some good music, just having an idea of what I'm getting into already. I don't know. I never really thought about it. Cool. It's a cool thought. Yeah, definitely. I don't know. Uh, I just, I always like being behind the scenes kind of person. I never wanted to be the center of attention. Gotcha. So this was like a, a perfect route for me. Yeah. It sounds, it sounds perfect. Um, Eric's been kind of sitting on the edge of his seat there. He's wanted to ask you about something since we started. Eric, oh, I'm sorry, let, Eric. You want to let her yeah, rip? I saw, him, I saw on Instagram, uh, he went uh, swimming with the sharks. Yeah, cool shark cage. Have you ever thought about filming uh, <clears throat> like any sort of wildlife documentaries I, or anything up that alley? Absolutely. So when I did all of that, um, long story short, I had a little break in my contract at, at Yahoo. So I had a three-month hiatus where I, I got laid off. And my brother lives in Hawaii. So I was just like, I have three months. Oh, that's cool. It's the middle of COVID. They're kind of open still because they were able to keep everyone. Uh, con- they were able to control who was coming in and out of the islands. Yeah. So COVID wasn't that terrible there and things were open. So I went out to just live with him and crash on his couch for a couple months. And I remember that whole time just thinking about, like I had a little GoPro with me, you know, but I remember thinking like, this would be so cool if I could be like an underwater camera op because I learned to scuba dive when I was out there. So like I have that kind of, you know, certification or whatever, but it's just a matter of, I don't, I would love to do something like that, but I don't know if I foresee that happening in the future. Just that's not my realm, you know? Well, what kind of hobbies do you have outside of uh, like photography and videography? Honestly, I like to game. I wasn't much of a gamer when I was like in high school, I was. And then Pretty much all of my college years, I didn't have a PlayStation or an Xbox. And I started getting back into gaming, like, maybe before COVID, probably like a year before COVID. So that's like two years ago now. So that's definitely a big hobby, you know. What kind of stuff you play? Um, I've been pretty into Warzone. I'm just sick of it at the moment. So I'm I'm looking for something new. I have Mafia. I just picked up Mafia last week. So I'm doing that. I'm all over the place. But I definitely like, I like shooters. I like Far Cry. I like Last of Us. Uh, I don't know, open world stuff. I, we were just talking about this before you hopped on. Are you a GTA guy? Yeah, absolutely. They just I, came out with a headline. I don't know if you know about this. They said uh, GTA 6, the earliest it might come out is 2025. <laughs> <laughs> but it's funny you say GTA because yesterday I was just surfing YouTube and I found there's this whole section of YouTube about GTA mods for PC. And... There's one of them where you can run this mod and your character is turned into a police officer and you drive around Los Santos and respond to calls. It's like a police simulator, but it's in GTA. It was crazy. That's pretty rad. (laughs) It was so crazy. Like you get a cop car and they give you a uniform and they modded it. So like the dispatch will like give you a call. It's like, it's a mission, you know, and you go on the mission and you see what, like you have to pull people over. It was really cool. (laughs) That's awesome. You play yeah. uh, Skyrim at all, Colin? No, I was never into the magic stuff for some reason. And like, I don't know why. Just not not my realm. Or like swords and shit like that. I'd rather get like a crazy gun or fly. Like an AK-47. Around. We yeah. get it. Yeah. It does more damage. 
I have respect for those games, but some of them are, especially like Fallout, they're just too slow burning for me. You know, gotcha. those are way too slow of games. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, my brother recently got uh, PlayStation Plus, and I didn't realize uh, that with that, you kind of they give you like free games. Yep. And yep. I was never a big gamer myself, so I'm playing Uncharted and God of War for the first time, and kind of falling in love with. Like I think video games are like the next movies. Like they're the way that they could tell stories. Is incredible. It really, it's crazy, and honestly, they're starting to get budgets now, like movies are as well. Yeah, it's know? crazy. Uh, before we get into our last thing here, Colin, was there anything you kind of expect us to talk about that we didn't get to, or? Um. Yeah, the only thing really was just kind of like advice to people starting out. I always like to. Talk oh my about god! This. Yeah, I would love to. I would and... love to hear that. Because we, I mean, usually what, who, the type of people that we talk to, Colin, it's, it's, it's usually music based. So people in bands and we ask them, you know, we like to think that our audience is maybe a band just starting out. What advice would you give to them? I'd love to hear what advice you, you'd want to give to young people starting out, whether it's in the freelance space right. or not, whatever well, you were planning to say. Even if it's music or you're an artist or honestly, whatever, if you think you want to do it, like just start doing it as soon as you can. That was my biggest regret was I didn't start take, I didn't even buy a camera until I was 23. So I'm 26 now, three years in, and I'm pretty happy with where I'm at, but it's really difficult for me sometimes to see all these people that are touring already. And they're like 21, 22, because they picked their can, they bought their camera when they were 16. Yeah. You know, so they have all that experience that I missed out on. So, you know, if, if you're in a band, go buy the guitar, start learning now, because the quicker you can start learning and bettering yourself, the quicker your career is going to be successful. That was like one of my big things. Um, the other one was just surround yourself with really good people. I was able to find some of the like photographers in my area who, you know, who shoot with bands and they shoot DJs. And it's still kind of crazy to me because I remember following some of these guys before, like when I was a fan still and thinking about like, oh, his photography is so good and his videos are so good. And I consider a lot of these people my friends now, you know, like I'm able to work with some of these guys. And five, six years ago, I just remember like oogling over their stuff on Instagram. And now they're calling me like, hey, I have a gig. Do you want to come shoot with me? You know, so definitely... I don't know if I would say like a mentorship, but you definitely want to have a good system of, of other people who are doing the same thing as you. And, and we all help each other out, you know? Absolutely. And I, someone's excuse might be, well, I don't know anybody around me who like it. The internet right. is an incredible well, tool. Especially with Instagram. I know, like, I wouldn't consider myself friends with some of these people, but I know like bigger photographers, like we'll DM about stuff. We've never met each other, but I have no problem reaching out. And then, it's fun when we're like at an event somewhere and I finally get to run into them and we can chat yeah. and we already know who each other is and what we're all about and what's going on. So it's definitely good just to have that network, surround yourself with good people who are doing good work and you can all just boost yourself up to the top. I got a lot of gigs that I probably, not that I shouldn't have gotten, but I got a lot of gigs that I know they had someone better to choose than me but I was able to get the gig because it was someone that I was more friendly with than the other person, you know, or this guy was talking shit about, you know, his friend. So they didn't want to hire him kind of thing. So I try to, I try to be as neutral as possible and, you know, keep my mouth shut and just be positive and do a good job. And I think people recognize that. And I would like to hope people like to work with me, you know, so that's, that's really important too, is don't be an asshole. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll, I'll say this, Colin, the few people from college that I do keep in touch with, sometimes they're, they ask me who's on the podcast, and I was excited to tell them, well, you remember Colin? I got Colin on the podcast this week, <laughs> and every single one of them was just like, oh, Colin, what a great guy. Hope yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I love to hear that. <laughs> yeah, and that's always been the outlook of like, Colin yeah. is just a super nice dude. I'm so happy to just like know him. And that's, yeah. Well, when it comes down to it, if you're thinking about being on the road or being on a tour bus with someone, you don't want to hate the people you're with. You yeah. Know? So I'm sure it's the same thing as being in a band. Part of it is is networking and doing good work and all, all those, you know, kind of givens. But another part of it is like so, your social game, you know, yeah, like sure. when I go out, I it's hard sometimes, but I always try to if I see someone else shooting that I don't know who they are. I always try to go up and, you know, say what's up and get their Instagram. Half the time, 
I already follow them. I just don't know what they look like, you know, mm-hmm. because a lot, I don't really post many pictures of myself and some people don't, but I always try to go out and introduce myself, you know, to managers and promoters. I want to make sure everyone knows who I am and I want them to like me. So when they think about someone to hire, I'm on the top of their list, you know? So it's really a huge social game as well, which I didn't expect that I was going to have to manage that kind of thing at all. Yeah. You know? I'm fortunate that I consider myself pretty good friends with a lot of the people I work with. So it came naturally. It's great. You know, it's not something I have to force, yes. but you definitely, you know, no one wants to be traveling with someone they don't like. No, not at all. No, you're completely right. And Colin, when, when we went to school together, were you there when the uh, Phil Lord and Chris Miller visited the campus? They were the Lego movie guys, right? Yeah. Yeah, I was there. Yeah. So yeah, for those who don't know, Phil Lord and Chris Miller, uh, they made the, the Lego movie. They made 21 Jump Street, a bunch of really, really cool stuff. They were about to go on and work on the Han Solo movie. Right, and, but they got fired. They got fired, which is... <laughs> Ah, but <laughs> um, when they when they came to school, they they did a Q and A, and I think yeah, they they asked what what advice would you have for you know our students like who want to you know get to the point where you are, and they just they, you've said it earlier, just go out and make stuff like whatever it is, it could be Seriously. totally totally Seriously. Uh, you know a, a a piece of pile of crap, uh, or it could be pretty cool, but like just keep making things and, and share it. You never know who's going to see it, and well, I think I've heard that. A bunch of times before but like this was coming from guys who like do it so no, that it's really stuck true with me Every, you have to make all of the bad songs until your band starts making good songs you know yeah you have to take all of the crappy photos make all of the bad videos you learn every time i go out i i'm not actively doing this but i like to my biggest goal when i go out is one i want to make the customer happy that's the most important thing but two is i want to do better than my last time i was out i always strive just to i don't know like I'll, I'll pick something that i did wrong the last time i went out and i'll make sure i don't do it again and just kind of learn from what i've done in the past and i didn't like this photo because it was underexposed you know so i'll remember next time not to do it again yeah and the whole thing is just about going out making whatever it is doing the best you can at whatever it is and then just improving off of it every time and as long as you're moving up you'll be successful. You know, you just don't want to move backwards. That's right, Colin. I appreciate uh, you, you wanting to, to get, send that advice out there. That's awesome. Uh, I don't want to keep you on for too much longer, Colin, but what we like to do to kind of wrap up episodes here is we like to play a game with our guests. Okay, uh, I'm down. Cool. We play a game <laughs> called This or That. Do you know how to play? I do not. Essentially, uh, Eric, you want to explain it? Yeah, so uh, we give you a little bit of this, we give you a little bit of that, and uh, you got to pick. Got to pick between the two. Okay. Does that make sense? Uh, we'll see. Give me the first one. I'll tell you if it makes sense. <laughs> Eric, do you have any of this or that's for, for Colin, or you want me to go first? Uh, you go first. Okay, okay. All right, let me pick a good one for you, Colin. So you give me two things, and I tell you which one I would like more? Exactly. Okay. Exactly. All right. All right. A dessert or the desert? Dessert. Why? Well, and we like for people to expand because you know it is a podcast. Oh, okay. Gotcha. gotcha. <laughs> um, no, I just, my mom, she's a really amazing baker. And I grew up like pies, brownies, cookies, oh, wow. candies, like everything's always homemade, birthday cakes. So I definitely have a sweet tooth. So I'm going dessert. <laughs> What's like your number one dessert? As a whole, I like cakes. I don't care what kind of cake it is, but I like cakes. That's why birthdays are always so good because then you get to have cake as well. That's so awesome. What's your number one desert? Yeah, if you had to pick a desert. I don't really have much experience with the desert. We went to I went to Vegas when I was a kid, and we went to like Arizona and Grand Canyon. So I would yeah. say it's my only experience is Grand Canyon, I Arizona gotcha. desert. I gotcha. The Sahara is just so mysterious. I think I really want to see the sand dunes. I think there's, you can take some like really crazy uh, photos out there. Mm. I would love to see the sand dunes or even I like action sports stuff too. So like, I feel like dune bugging would be one of the coolest things. Oh, that'd be world. so rad. <laughs> I don't have any, any idea of how I'm going to do it, but I'll figure it out. Dude, where would you, where else would you want to travel and take pictures of like landscapes and stuff? 
I'm down to go anywhere. Honestly, I just like I like traveling in general. Um, when you really, when you studied abroad, where did you go? I went to Italy. Was like where we were based out of. Gotcha. And then over the three months, I think we went to like twelve different countries. So I was able wow. to travel like a lot. But Europe's different than it is here because everything's so close. You know. Yeah. You can get on a bus three hours and you're in another country. Yeah. So we were that definitely sparked my huge interest in traveling was being able to do all that. It's super rad. Eric, you have one yet, or should I go again? Yeah, I got one. Cool. Uh, uh, reality shows or nature docs? Nature docs. I honestly, I, I do not. I like reality TV, but I feel like my brain's rotting half the time. <laughs> depending on what it is some of them are good i just like it, if it's too trashy i can't watch it my mom loves <laughs> trashy tv and it's just not my thing so i'm gonna go nature docs i love would it you, uh, would you work on a nature doc absolutely i think that would be so cool so so i watch like planet earth and stuff and it's a beautiful to see they do incredible work but when i think about it they're probably like sitting in the super dangerous jungle they are for six hours yep. waiting for something to happen it's they're in the arctic freezing their tails off yep. waiting for maybe something to happen i'd be like oh my god it's so grueling well, on netflix they have a series that shows the behind the scenes of planet earth i, I guess oh they do it. it's really good it's crazy i had no these, idea these guys live in like little huts in like the serbian like uh winter wilderness like looking for snow leopards for like months and they don't find them but he's in it's like one guy and it's like maybe a five by 10 little hut that he lives in for like six months or something crazy. It's insane. I'm going to, I'm going to find out what it's called. Yeah. I, I, I cause I definitely want to really see it. It's really good. I do love planet earth and it, but it's hard for me to enjoy because that's all I could think about in the back of my head is man, I feel for the, the folks that, on this crew. Something like that. I don't know if I could do it that extreme where you're out for months on end, you know? Yeah. But depending on what it was. And then like, oh, we're looking at mountain goats. This guy not only has to be a, a, an expert cinematographer, he needs to know how to like rock climb. Right. That's the other thing. Too. They need to know how to, if they want to go into water, they need to know how to scuba and film yep. something while it's, it's moving. It's intense. It's insane. Super intense. I'm just going to look it up quick while we're, while we're talking. Do your thing. Yeah, I'd love to know the name of it. Because now it's going to bother me. Because I... My favorite though is Blue Planet. You watch Blue Planet? Um, to me, they're interchangeable. Honestly, I couldn't really tell you the difference. Well, Blue Planet is uh, just strictly under the water, and they go like super deep down. And to me, it's like looking into another universe. It those, is another universe. Those animals and the ecosystem. It's the fact that we still don't even know that much about it. It's it's crazy. So apparently, it's called Our Planet Behind the Scenes. So oh, okay, <laughs> not very hard to find. Okay, cool. I'll definitely look into that. Thank you for recommending it. Yeah, that was like a really good one. I love seeing how the back end of things and how different productions work and yeah, and all that kind of stuff. You know, I used to. My parents used to get me the Harry Potter DVDs, and I would never watch the movie. I just watched the special features. <laughs> uh, Eric, do you have a final this or that, or do you want me to ask it? Um, all you, but all me. The pressure's on. <laughs> uh, okay, Colin. Kokomo or Coca-Cola? Say Kokomo. I like um, going back to what we we're saying. I'm actually, where is Kokomo? Do we even know? I just know it's. I tropical. have. I don't know. I think I tried to look it up. The Bahamas. And I find it. Yeah. It's with, it's with the K. Or is it yes. K? I think it's with the Bahamas. I'm gonna say I'm gonna say Kokomo because I'm not a big soda guy. Gotcha. I love a nice beach. I love some blue water. That's definitely right up my alley. Cool. Do you do like a? seltzers or anything like that just just h2o um i mean it depends on depends on what we're doing if we're on vacation there's definitely there's definitely seltzers nice that's a big thing too kind of going back to what i was saying real quick is i know a lot of people uh that work in the music industry they drink while they work and it's like it's accepted you know yeah for bands you know if you guys go and play a show drunk no one's going to say anything as long as you're fine and not fucking the songs up sure but I know a lot of photographers that drink while they work and, you know, maybe if I'm like really close with the artist or who I'm working for, you know, maybe I'll have like one or two beers, but a huge thing is like staying sober and yeah. just keep having your wits about you. Right. I do it for a couple of reasons because one, it's dangerous. What if I like fall over or fall off the stage or knock a monitor over like God forbid and, and completely break something. 
Two, I want to like be professional, you know, I've had people will offer me a beer and I'll say no. And they're like, oh, that's good. Like you're really professional, you know? So people notice. Yeah. But if we're at the beach and it's nice and there's blue water and it's sunny out, there's definitely seltzers there. <laughs> All right. So Colin Webb knows the difference between work and play. Respect. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, Dude, it's been so, so great to be able to, to catch up and hear about all the cool stuff that you're doing. Um, yeah, I appreciate thank- you guys having, having me. When I saw your DM, I was like so excited. I didn't even oh, that's that. awesome. No, I'm, gl- I'm glad to hear. And, um, you know, if you're, if you're up for it, I'd love to hear about all the awesome stuff you got to do after the fall is over. Absolutely. Or even before then, whenever you want. I just, we'd love to have you back. And yeah. I appreciate that. Uh, we'll keep I'm going to have to wait line. until something really cool happens. And then I'll be like, all right, I'm going to DM Russ now. I'm yeah. Gonna... Whenever you want, I, you send me the DM. And then uh, if I can't wait and I, I want to talk to you sooner, I'll, I'll shoot out, I'll reach out to you about that. Hope, hopefully I'll just be getting off like a, a fly out or a bus tour or we'll, we'll see what happens. The sky's the limit. So. The sky is the limit, dude. Well, I'm excited we'll see. to see what happens either way. I'm sure you're going to crush it. Um, I appreciate that. No. Yeah. appreciate you hopping on and uh, I don't know. Be well. Good luck with everything. Appreciate that. Nice to meet you. Welcome back, guys. Hope you enjoyed that uh, that little interview. Uh, what an exciting life, huh? What a, what a cool job. Yeah, especially now that the pandemic's kind of, it's not really over, but you know, things are getting safer. Uh, concerts and festivals are starting back up again. Uh, I'm excited to see uh, Colin grow and uh, follow the rest of his story. And uh, if you want to follow him in a more realistic sense, you could find Colin on Instagram at cw.media underscore. And uh, you can see for yourself how talented he is. And uh, that's what Soundtown's all about, isn't it, Eric? Lifting up others and sharing their art with the world. <laughs> you said it <laughs> well uh we'll check back next week with everybody a brand new episode of sound town thank you for listening to not only this episode but uh if you've listened to others we appreciate it uh leave us a comment a review go check out our merch store i don't know what else to say rather than uh, thank you and uh eric i love hosting this podcast with you my man hey i love co-hosting this podcast with you my man Ah, shucks. Well, we'll we'll end it on that super sweet, sappy note and uh, come back real soon to Soundtown. <laughs>